and welcome once again dear viewer to this series where I talk about the pet peeves and little curiosities of cinema and today's topic is perhaps one of the most interesting yet parodies just that word alone has certain connotations good or bad depending on your experiences with them some will know parodies as the unfortunate abortion child of people such as Aaron Seltzer and Jason Friedberg while some will know it as the classic comedies of Mel Brooks and of course the Zaz team Zucker Abrams and Zucker so what exactly is a parody for those of you who probably lived in a cave or simply just don't care for comedy well essentially it's where you take a certain genre of film and make fun of it of course in the case of more recent spoofs such as the Seltzerberg efforts that's become a little bit more open for debate and not in the good sense now I'm not a person who has a unholy hatred of parodies in fact I enjoy a lot of them especially the works of Mel Brooks. Uh, Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein are two of my favorite comedies as well as favorite films. What makes them so good is that, aside from being really funny, they work as parodies. The thing about good parodies is that they tell the same story as a straight, serious film from that genre, but instead of playing it serious, they play it for laughs. The reason why Blazing Saddles works is if you took out all the jokes you could tell it as a straightforward serious western about racism if you took all the jokes out of Young Frankenstein you could tell it as a straight sequel to the Universal Frankenstein series the best spoofs are the ones that work as exaggerations of standard films of that genre again look at a film like say Airplane which took these ideas with disaster movies, specifically ones set in the air, such as the airport series and more specifically Zero Hour from the 1950s and just turned everything on its head. If you took all the jokes out though, you could actually tell a serious story with that film about an airplane that is going to crash with people sick on board. However recently spoofs have changed into something altogether different. Seltzberg and a number of spoofs that are produced more recently. You know the ones I'm talking about. Date Movie, Meet the Spartans, Epic Movie, Disaster Movie, Vampire Sucks and Soon, The Biggest Movie of All Time 3D, not to mention the numerous other little spoofs out there, a lot of them starring Leslie Nielsen as well as the Scary Movie series. They seem to follow a different train of thought from Zaz or Brooks. Here, the jokes are more a collection of sketches and skits than they are telling a cohesive story. This is especially true with Seltzerberg. Instead of just focusing on a typical story of the genre, they parody pretty much everything that genre has to offer. With Meet the Spartans, they pretty much were parodying every big stylized thing going on at the time. With Epic Movie, they were parodying every big blockbuster that was going on at the time. With Vampire Sucks, they were par parodying not just Twilight, but a lot of the big movies that were popular with young people. And as we've seen from both critics and audiences alike, it's worked out less than well. But why doesn't it work? Well, here's my view on the matter. For me, the best parodies are the ones that, as I said, tell the same kind of story as a serious film in that genre, but play it for laughs. As I said, Blazing Saddles works because even though it's full of jokes and silly moments and of course the fart scene and Mongo and all those great little things it's telling a straightforward story about a town that is dealing with the issue of racism when they have to take in a black sheriff by comparison disaster movie has nothing as a central theme it doesn't spoof one specific film and instead is a collection of sketches which frankly are not particularly funny as I'm sure many of you are already aware and some have been quick to blame YouTube and this quote-unquote culture of we can find anything funny as the reason why Seltzerberg movies make a lot of money. Now, the fact is, bad spoofs existed long before the advent of YouTube, as I said. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Leslie Nielsen here, but a lot of the terrible spoofs of the 90s and early 2000s before the birth of YouTube did star him. You don't need me to list the number of just awful awful pieces of trite garbage that he was in such as 2001 a space travesty repossessed 
wrongfully accused. In fact, wrongfully accused brings to light something that I want to talk about with parodies. As I said, the best parodies are the ones that try to tell straightforward stories based on the genre that they're making fun of. With wrongfully accused, in server genre, it's a specific sort of film, the one starring Harrison Ford. Now, in the opening scene, when we start out and Leslie Nielsen's character is playing in a violin concert, we see an usher guide a lady to her seat and using a lightsaber to signal where she can sit. Now, if that already did not sound particularly funny, trust me, it wasn't. But more than that, why was it there? I mean, so, I mean, yeah, Harrison Ford was in Star Wars, but that's a pretty loose connection at best. He never wielded a lightsaber at any point in those films. And it felt really shoehorned. As if to say, hey, I have found an opportunity here. We can't go one minute without having some kind of reference in here, so let's just do this. Granted, it doesn't make much sense, but who cares? People just go with it anyway. And that very much to me is the problem with a lot of modern spoofs, that aside from the whole, you know, sketches formula, it's just the fact that they think anything is funny. The thing is, as I have said, and I apologize for repeating, you need to do more than just have a bunch of funny sketches and costumes. You need to tell something that's cohesive. This is something that Seltzerberg doesn't understand and, and pretty much a lot of more recent spoofs don't understand. Another example I want to bring up in this case is Scary Movie 4, which frankly was mediocre at best. The thing is, it starts out as if it's going to spoof Saw, but then it jumps around. There are points where it spoofs War... Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds, there are points where it spoofs a whole bunch of other blockbusters that were oriented towards, you know, fear and horror and science fiction, and it just doesn't work, because once again, that's a collection of sketches. The film should have focused on being a strict parody of one thing. Again, look back at Blazing Saddles or Airplane, they took one story and filled it with jokes. Scary Movie 4, by comparison, is just a collection of sketches, and of course, as some of you might know, f having a very outdated sequence with Michael Jackson, which, frankly, in retrospect, was in worse taste than any of us imagined, even when the film was originally released. It's just making a pitch, patch, crisscross, stitched together caboodle in the hopes that it'll somehow work, and it just doesn't. For me... As I've said, spoofs need to have cohesiveness. You need to take a central serious theme and really screw with that idea. That's why Brooks and Zaz were so successful, because their movies took straight stories and turned them completely on their heads. Humor in and of itself is subjective, but just the nature and the dynamics of a spoof are pretty much set in stone. And the fact that people seem to be deviating away from that is something to really think about when it comes to the whole issue of spoofs.